Before you read the moments from my life, I'd like to apologize for the language, but I'm trying to recall it from every exact detail. During the months of June, July, and August, I spent many hot summers of my childhood at my grandmother's house furthest west on the island of Cape Breton. The forest was plentiful and the plains were a vibrant green, and my grandmother's house was a rickety old two-story that was built sometime in the 50s and looked like it didn't belong. Despite its shortcomings, my childhood summers spent here were some of the best that I ever had. There were no other children to play with for the next few miles down towards town, but I had my own fun running through the fields of grass and smelling flowers in my grandmother's garden. I can still recall the smell of Nana's butterscotch muffins wafting through an open window, sweet and heavenly and beckoning me inside. I can still remember the sound of the cicadas and the warm breeze brushing my skin. I can still remember my grandmother's face watching me from underneath the porch step, smiling with all her teeth and calling me to come inside. There were a lot of rules at my grandmother's house, like no running inside the house with the shoes on and not playing in the garden. Some of them didn't make sense to me, like locking the windows and doors before bed, even though we lived miles from society. Turning off the television at eight and being in bed by nine was the worst on a night with no school. There were even unspoken rules, ones that I didn't ask my grandmother about. Things like not sleeping with our arms and legs off of the bed. Things like checking the windows and doors twice. Things like not pulling the shower curtain closed all the way, or hiding under beds and in closets, or pulling the cord to the attic off the nail that it was wrapped around. Though some things were odd, my grandmother was a very well-liked woman. She was lithe and her hair was long, shining in a bright silver that looked like it reflected the moonlight. While she kept her hair up in a tight bun, making the frown lines on her face prominent, but when her hair was down, she could have been called beautiful. When my grandpa was alive, we would call her a silver fox, as once she was young and beautiful and quick-tempered. But she was the only one who could say something witty and clever to one of my grandpa's quips. Age made her soften herself. Her children made her emotional. My grandpa passing away made her sad and distant. But never once did I question her love for me. Grandpa spent a lot of time out west, so his visits home were rare. But they were wonderful. My grandmother used to say she liked having me around when... He was gone during the summertime because it made her feel useful. I guess now that I look back on it, my Nana was lonely. I will try to detail the events that happened chronologically, but I was little and blacked out a lot of my childhood here. Men with good reason. My grandmother lived under the house. I never saw her go to bed once. I never thought too much about it as I was a big kid and I can sleep in a bed alone with my covers tucked around me and my fingers and toes tucked safely away from the edge of the bed. There were quite a few times, though, that she would visit me from the window, standing in her garden bed, just to whisper things to me from behind the glass. My grandma's face was pressed against the window pane, smiling with all of her teeth, her hands cupped around her face to see inside a little better. I never questioned it, why would I? I was just a kid with a silly grandma. There's nothing to it. Sweetie, can you open the door for me? I'm a little chilly out here. She told me once, her lips moving just slightly to sound out the words that she spoke from behind the glass. The window was up high enough that I could see just above her collarbone. But I could see that she wasn't wearing anything. I laughed a childish laugh and I responded with something like, That's silly, Grandma. You have a key to get inside. Come in before you get a cold. My grandmother wouldn't respond after this, but her smile would never waver, not even for a second. She would still stand in what would have been my Nana's garden, one of the things my grandmother wouldn't let me do. 
Though she wouldn't say anything directly to me, every time I turned away from the window, I could hear her whispering things to me. I couldn't make it out, and I thought that it could have just been nonsense. I didn't turn around to face her. I was uncomfortable with facing her for some reason, and would lay in my bed listening to her mumble incoherent things until I could fall asleep. Then it became a routine. I would listen to her whisper softly until I slept, and by the morning she would be in the kitchen, making breakfast and pretending like nothing happened. My grandma would call me silly when I tried to confront her about it, and told me that I had a vivid imagination in the way that adults would tell kids. I never really brought anything up to her after this. It was like a game between us. Every couple of nights, my grandma would come to the window and tell me to let her inside. Sometimes, she would just tell me that I was a good kid. Sometimes... Sometimes she would tell me that I was a bad child. Once, and only once, did I see her smile drift from her face. She had been pestering me every night since I had started this game between us. I would ask her, beg her, plead to her to just go away and let me sleep. And I was too tired to play and I didn't want to anymore. It wasn't until I got aggravated enough to yell at her to just leave me alone. And for a few days, she did. But not for long. I already told you I don't want to play anymore. Just come inside yourself and go to sleep. Her smile turned into a frown, but the look in her eyes made me uncomfortable. She didn't whisper to me that night, but every few moments I would turn around and find her watching me, frowning and glaring. I don't know how I managed to fall asleep, but I do remember waking up to the smell of bacon on the frying pan and the sound of my grandmother humming a song. One night, I decided to purposefully unlock the door. I waited until my Nana went to bed to creep across the cold floor, unhook the latches from the front door, and ran to my room to wait underneath the covers for my grandmother to finally give up the game. She didn't come to the window that night. She came through my bedroom door. I could hear her get on all fours. I could hear her shuffle across the floor. I could hear her crawl under my bed. And that night, I heard her whispering from underneath my mattress. With my ears pressed up against the bed and the covers pulled over my head. I'm hungry. I'm so hungry. I can smell you. I shifted on the bed, with my back facing the wall and the window. I didn't want to play this game anymore. I can smell your fucking liver. The helplessness of knowing that there was no one that I could call. To wake up from this bad dream was a feeling that I'd never experienced again. I'm going to crawl into your inside, you little bag of shit. I can't tell you what she continued to whisper to me from underneath my mattress. I blocked a lot of it out, curled myself into my blankets, and made sure that there were no parts sticking out before I slept. I can tell you that, when I opened my eyes a crack, peering out from my blankets, I could see my grandmother's eyes watching me from the bottom of my bed. I don't know how long I laid there, paralyzed with fear, but I did fall asleep and managed to wake up the next day without my Nana watching me from under the bed. If she noticed the unlatched door, she didn't say anything. The look she gave me was a curious side eye as she put eggs on my plate. I can tell I broke her heart a little when I asked to go home. From that night on to the next few nights before I went home, I made sure that the door was locked twice. She visited me repeatedly until I left. 
I didn't look at the house getting smaller and smaller in the rear view window, feeling like, if I did, I might have seen her watching me back. I didn't go back to the house after the summertime. My grandmother came to, my grandma came to visit me quite a few times at my house. But there was nothing out of the ordinary as far as I could tell. The nightly visits were over. And a few years after that, my grandpa was diagnosed with late-stage Alzheimer's. My grandma and grandpa were two of the most in-love people that you could have met, without being overly showy. My grandpa's sneaky kisses behind the back of his grandkids and the smile on my grandmother's face when he would come and ask her for coffee was proof. I could see the pain on her face when she would talk about how he forgot her name again that day, or couldn't remember the name of his kids. I watched my grandmother suffer through my grandpa's disease as he slipped and slipped and slipped. Finally slipped away. My grandmother died a while after that, hooked up to hospital tubes and being sassy to nurses. Thankfully, she never had to experience the deterioration of her mind as Alzheimer's took her away from us. My grandma was spry, beautiful, clever, and a little weird. It wasn't until we went back to clean her things from her house that I asked my mom about it. I asked her in the middle of this about my childhood. I didn't mention the things that I experienced. I felt like she, too, would have just given me a flippant wave and a spiel about my imagination as a kid. Her grandmother was a little superstitious for a short time. We thought that she might have been getting Alzheimer's herself. My mother sighed as she tucked photographs into a cardboard box. There were just little things, like not remembering where she put her keys, forgetting about doing things in her garden, you know, little things like that. And suddenly I felt like there was a weight lifted off my chest. That could have been very well been the explanation for the oddities and the weirdness. I felt kind of rude saying it out loud myself. My mother got me to help her pack her boxes into the back of the car, ready to start moving out the things from the house and let it become an abandoned shack in the middle of nowhere. When we were finished packing, I hopped in the passenger seat, lit up a smoke, and looked back to give one final farewell to the place where I spent a lot of time with my favorite grandmother in the world. The only thing is, as we were driving back home, why did I see her watching me from underneath the step with a smile on her face and far too many teeth?